And we are live. What's up, guys? So today we are starting much earlier than usual. You might be thinking, what the fuck is going on? Alex is doing a live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Are you usually past the fuck out this time? Yes. But we have a special guest, Kezia Noble. And I'm excited to have her on. Uh, you know, one of the big things that I've noticed about her content is she keeps it pretty real. Like she doesn't like I watched a lot of her content last night doing research up to this interview. And there wasn't anything that I saw where I could say she's wrong about. Like there really wasn't anything like she might present it in a different way than I would. Uh, but I think she keeps it pretty real. So I'm excited to have her on. Welcome, Kezia. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me on your show. So I think the question that we need to start with is, uh, how the fuck did you get into all this? Because the, you know, the story for a lot of guys have is we used to suck with chicks, then we went out, we got good, and then we started teaching. I'm assuming you never sucked with chicks. So what's your uh, what's your story? So um, it's way back in 2006. Um, I would say I was like headhunted almost. Um, some guy approached me in a bar and he said that he's running um, boot camps because um, he works for a pickup artist company. I swear I had not even, I didn't even know what a pickup artist was. Um, he said, we just want to get some female feedback because what they do is they would teach the guys, um, you know, skills, techniques, and then we'd be the guinea pigs and we'd give feedback. Mm, okay. um, I'm just one of those people that I'm, I just say yes to loads of stuff. Just, that's my attitude. And the quality you're all loving a woman. <laughs> Whoops, there should have been a caveat there. Um, well, I say yes to a lot of things. Anyway, so um, I, I turned up to this event and uh, two things that I noticed. The first was that, um, I, but just to, to I just um, skipped a part that was quite important, is that I didn't believe in any of this stuff. I believed that there was chemistry or there wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but I went there and I saw these techniques being taught and I really did see a huge difference in these guys from, you know, the beginning of the boot camp to the end of the boot camp. Um, so that's the first thing I noticed. And the second thing I noticed is that the other women there were just not giving honest feedback. Mm -hmm. It was wishy-washy, nice, kind of like be yourself, be more confident, smile more bullshit. And I thought these guys have paid like 500 bucks to hear that. So I'm very, I'm a straight talker. I'm very, very direct. I've lost a lot of friends over it and I gained a lot of friends too. <laughs> but um, I was just very direct with these guys. And I remember when I gave my feedback, I remember getting my coat and thinking they're going to come after me with pitchforks. And it was the complete opposite. They actually, there was actually a queue of guys saying, can I book you for private one-on-ones? And I was like, dude, seriously, I, I just came here today for like, just for the weekend. And um, then the owner of that company, I'm trying to make this as short as possible, guys, okay? I really am. I'm streamlining this as much as I can. Um, and the guy who ran the company at the time said, look, you know, do you want to come next weekend? Anyway, cut a long story short, I ended up going a lot of weekends to give, um, uh, you know, feedback, advice. And then I became an, a, a trainer in my own right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I started building up a name for myself on YouTube. And then I got a book deal. Um, and with the book deal, I got a lot of media attention um, in the UK and America. And from that, that was 2010, I started my own company, my own team, uh, my own products, my, my own coaching, um, sorry, my own courses. And uh, yeah, that, that's the extremely streamlined version of how I got into this. That's pretty interesting. I think you said something interesting also about you were giving honest feedback. So I think a criticism that uh, I'm sure you've heard a million times and that's popular in the manosphere community is that, oh, you can't ask a woman for advice. It's like the old adage, don't ask a fish how to fish, right? Which I actually disagree with. I've never agreed with that. I thought I think that you can have great advice from a woman as long as she is honest and self-aware. Uh, so I think you need that combination. Did you find you've always been like pretty self-aware? Because the reason I bring that up is because uh, – if a woman is not self-aware, but she's honest, she might not know what she likes. Like, for example, uh, I don't know if you've seen a lot of my content, but there was this one chick who I've done several videos with. And, uh, you know, when, whenever we would we kind of have this issue, whenever we shoot a video, I'd be like, okay, so explain to the guys what you want in a man. She'd be like, I just want someone nice and polite and someone who's very respectful. I'm like, yeah, but you like to, you know, you like to be called a little slut and you like to be choked and like, like, come on, like, that's not how I got you. Like, just be honest. She's like, so that's the issue. She was honest, but she wasn't self-aware. 
Do you, have you always been like pretty self-aware? I'm honest, but she's not self-aware. Um, well, no, I'm honest and very self-aware and very unapologetic. Um, so I explain female desire in a very crude way. And oh. I think that's good. I think that's what men, I've, I only teach men. A lot of people say, why don't you teach women? I'm like, because that would literally be the blind leading the blind. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do that. But with men, when they've made the decision, when men have made the decision to get help, women will make the decision earlier to get help if there's a problem. But men, you know, when they've made that decision, look, I need to fix this problem in my life. They just want straight talking. They don't want niceties. I've noticed right. that. And that makes it easier for me. So, you know, I can be, I'm quite a crude person. The way I speak is quite crude. Um, and I think that that kind of direct, no bullshit insight into women and what triggers women's desires and sort of decoding the sort of confusion around women, um, that I think that that helps guys a lot. But I just, you know, they don't want you to go around the houses. I don't believe guys want to be fed shit. With no. women, you can literally feed them shit. You have to tell them, <laughs> you're, a goddess, you're beautiful, you're amazing. And then you can sort of go in for the blow and give them you know, the, the real truth. Right. And I, I don't have to, I'm just not that kind of person. So. Yeah, well, part of that might be the British aspect, right? I found the Brits are always pretty direct. Do you think so? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, uh, I, yeah, I think, I, I, you said you're Russian, no? Yeah, I was born in Russia, but I grew up in America. I grew up in America mostly, so I'm mostly American culture in terms of Russia culture. The most direct people I've ever met. Yeah, we are pretty direct. Okay, time for the intercourse now. No more bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's not at all. All right, so uh, next question. I want to ask this. Um, nice guys. I've seen you talk about this in videos, and I very much agree with what you have to say. Can you elaborate this? Why do nice guys not get laid? Why do girls not like nice guys? Okay. So um, nice guy's not the good guy. Um, I think, by yeah. the way, I use a lot of my own reference points to help guys. So I have a type. Everyone has a type. But, you know, if I look at the guys that I've slept with or gone out with, they haven't always fitted that, fit that type. Um, and they've either been the bad guy or the good guy. Um, but they've never been the nice guy because nice guys just simply do not get the women because what the nice guy is, the nice guy's fake. We take men, sorry, men take on the nice guy persona because they don't know what else to do. And it's an artificial representation of who they are. They're representing themselves as boring. Um, they're just agreeing with everything she says, bending their own reality in accordance with hers. Um, a lot of guys who put on this nice guy facade, and I don't think it's intentional. It's just because they haven't been taught by anyone. So they just go into this nice mm -hmm. guy mode. They're watering down everything that makes them attractive. Mm -hmm. They're watering down everything that they're worried about making them unattractive. But at the same time, they're watering down everything that makes them attractive. They're not cocky. They won't be as opinionated. They won't stand up for themselves because the whole nice guy um, belief is the main. Sorry, belief is um, that they are playing not to lose rather than playing to win. Uh, and for me, that's the secret of good game: is playing to win, not playing not to lose, which is what the nice guys are doing. They're playing everything safe, and therefore it's impossible for them to sexually escalate or anything like that. So I always say to guys, look, if you want to understand, you know, the nice guy, it's better to understand the good guy and the bad guy, first of all, and understand what they're doing, because then you'll get a much clearer idea, I believe, of where the nice guy's going wrong. And um, this is something that really annoys me about women, actually, is that uh, they're like, why do you tell guys not to be a nice guy? I'm like, have you ever fucked a nice guy? I'm like, yeah, loads of times. I'm like, no, he wasn't, you fucking idiot. He was a great guy. He was amazing. He was a gentleman. I, I never tell guys don't be a gentleman or anything like that, but own it, own it. Nice guys don't own shit. Nice guys are like apologetic. It's not the same as a great guy. Right. I think this is the place where it's coming from. So nice guy is doing things for the girl because he wants to impress her and he wants to win her affection. A good guy is doing it that's simply because that's his nature. Yes, yes. He And he likes to treat women well. He likes it. He gets off on it. He enjoys it. I know loads of men who love being romantic with women and it's, they, they get off on it. They lit, they love it. <laughs> it's oh my God. That one time I hold the door for that chick. That's so hot. <laughs> well, I was thinking a bit more romantic. That's, that's good manners. Yeah. 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 
Uh, okay, so uh, we ca- you kind of brought something up, uh, which is, you know, you looked at the guys that you date. So at, at this point, like, you know, where you're at, what, what, what would you say you go for in a guy? Like, what does it oh. take to seduce the infamous Kezia Noble? Uh-huh. Okay, so this is, a, this, is, this is quite interesting because there are, there are certain things that are, I think, for everybody, which is, um, how do you put it, like a red flag, which is just if, if a woman does that or if a man does that, I can't go there. I can't mm-hmm. go there. Um, and then you've got little things which when you, the desires there, you, you overlook. And they're mm-hmm. things that you were quite critical of before. Like, oh, I don't like a man that does this. I don't like a man who um, has bad table manners or some bullshit like that. But you, I'm telling you, no one, no woman on this planet is going to say, I'm not going to fuck Leonardo DiCaprio because he's got bad table manners, right? So when, so desire, <laughs> when desire is there, you overlook all the little things, but then you've got a few red flags that you can't tolerate. So um, a personal one for me is I like rebellious men. I like men who are non-conformists, who mm-hmm. do their thing. Um, I'm very into that. I'm very attracted to that. And I think that someone that was completely, I think a guy that was scared, I couldn't ever go, date a guy who was frightened. That's a complete, and that's a big one. That's just a complete turn off. And I just don't care how hot he is or how successful he is. If he's needy or frightened, they're the stay clear signs. It, 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 that destroys attraction. And I think men have that about women, certain traits and women. I can see that specifically with you when you tell me you're a dating coach because they feel like then you know all the tricks that they're going to do. Well, you know what? I actually quite – it feel, um, being a dating coach filters out the guys that I don't think I would be interested in. So if I was talking to a guy and he was like, oh, my God, you're a dating coach. I better not go there. I better play it safe. It's like, okay, I filtered you out because you're not my kind of <laughs> anyhow and if someone's like yeah fuck it you know show me what you got and i'll show you what i got something along those lines then i've already he's already sort of passed you know he's already um passed the first test Um, i just want your audience to um who are listening to this to understand when i talk about tests and stuff like that i don't want to sit there and think oh god women and their fucking tests because men have tests too um and i think there's there's nothing wrong with that that's just the way of the world you know, that's that's how attraction works. We have our little things that we sort of subconsciously and consciously do to work out if that person um, is is um, appropriate for us. Sure. What are some other big red flags for you? Fear is a big one. I don't like scared men. I don't like scared men at all. I don't care. I don't. I think that's why I like the rebellious kind of side. And I, I, I just men that first of all stand up for themselves, to champion me. I need a man to champion me. So I need to know that I'll be with a guy. And if some something happens, he'll champion me. He won't go, well, let's leave it. Let's just drop it. Uh-huh. You know, I that's for me a complete turn off. For some women, they might say, no, I like a peacekeeper more. Um, but I think the the but the if you're asking me about that's a personal thing for me, but a universal uh, there's certain universal traits that puts women off, and the biggest one is neediness. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, neediness. Men don't like neediness either, but they will still be attracted to a needy woman to a certain extent if she's really fucking hot and she's got other things going for her. Women, it they will run for the hills if they see that in a man. I tell my audience this all the time. Don't be needy. I've seen this time and time again. Guys just torpedo budding relationships with neediness. Yeah, it's the biggest one. And we've all done it. I've done it. I've been needy in a, in, in a, in a relationship or, you know, in the early stages. And people can smell it on you. They can smell it. Both men and women can smell it on each other. And it's one of the, the biggest ones that we find. Um, you, can, you can hide it. There are ways to hide it. But you need incredible self-control and discipline. Incredible self-control. Or you can just so, be needy, but that's actually a much more, that's about inner game. And that's, that, that comes after you start actually getting an abundance of women and, and you build up reference points. That comes as a result. So this, this kind of leads me to the next question. Uh, so if a guy tells me, like, you know what, man, like, I, I don't want to be a player. There's this one girl, one specific girl who I like on. They have kind of one-itis. I don't know much about her. Maybe I even just saw her on Instagram, but I really want this girl. What's your advice for me to get this girl? And the advice I always give is if you just focus on this one girl, you're probably going to fuck it up. So my advice for you is to go out and talk to other girls and get abundance in your life 
and that will help you get that specific girl. Would you agree with something like that? Yeah, you're looking at a very holistic approach. That's, that's what you're doing, and I agree with it. Uh, but I will have some guys that will be like, you know, I need to get this girl. Um, and I will give them that advice, exactly what you've said, but they're like, I need that girl. And if they don't go to me, they're going to go to somebody else. So I'm like, okay, you don't want to do the, the hard work. You don't want to, like, grow as a person and have a true abundancy mindset and then energy shifts start taking place and then you get on this positive feedback loop and all the magic starts. No, 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 I just want to get this girl. Right. And there are ways to do it. You, you know, they have to give me as much information about her as possible, messages, stuff like that. And... Uh, yeah, then, you know, I can definitely, and I have done, increase their chances of getting the woman. But it depends how much they know her. That is a big, and if there's history. I mean, I have so many clients um, with all at different stages of friend zones and shit. <laughs> yeah, I see that all the time, which actually is a good question. So there's the friend zone, there's the, um, you know, fuck boy, one night stand, and then there's the relationship worthy. What do you think? Do, how do girls discern between, oh, this guy is just friend zone, this guy is just fuck boy worthy, and this guy is someone who I can see myself dating? I think, first of all, fuck boy has got much more of a chance of getting in a relationship than um, friend zone guy. Sure. Um, so what was the question again? Sorry. Um, how, how do women discern? I guess my question would be, how do women make it? When, when you meet a guy on a date, how do you discern, okay, eh, uh, friend zone, or ooh, fuck boy, or oh, I can introduce him to mom. See, the whole fuckboy thing, women do have fuckboys, but it's not as common as guys think. Um, for a woman to sleep with a guy, there, there has to be quite an element of attraction there. Um, with men, it's different. And men, they can, you know, if there's a hole, there's a goal kind of thing. You know, if it's, it's got a squirt, it's worth a squirt and all those, <laughs> all those lovely sayings. Women it's a bit different with women. It's a bit different. But yeah, okay, just to, for the sake of this question, um, how do we tell? That's a really, I've never been asked that. Um, I guess let me, let me rephrase the question a little bit differently. I've had a lot of situations where girls who I've gone on a date with, they say, usually I never sleep with a guy on the first date, but, and then they make the exception for me, right? And I guess like I've always tried to explain this to clients is like, I guess a lot of girls look at me and they think like, oh yeah, he's kind of a fuck boy, which is kind of something I very much own. Right. Uh, I have been in relationships before. I was contrary to popular belief. But I guess like I've always had I've always tried to explain to my clients, OK, why does a girl look at me and think I can. You know, this is a fuck boy. I can fuck him on the first night. But when she goes on a date with you, she makes you wait three or four dates. But I think you might be able to elaborate on this probably even better than I can. But, you know, oh, God, this is really I'm a I'm a little bit different. Whereas if I like someone, I will stick with them quite quickly because oh. uh, I just can't control myself. <laughs> Oh, you really like someone um but yeah i think yeah okay obviously um if I, I i wait for two reasons i either wait and i'm telling you a lot of girls do this they they wait because they're not attracted yet and they're just sort of hoping that some attraction mm -hmm. you know sparks in the fourth date um and then yes there's the other half that you know are doing it because they are you know making sure that the guy appreciates them and, and blah 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 um, I think that's important to try and find out which one she's doing. I find that that could be very useful for guys. Um, there's a lot of guys just don't understand what's going on. They're like, oh, should I be making more of a move around this time? Is she interested in me? Is she not? And I just think you've got to be careful, guys, because that third date, that second, third date, that's turning into, that could potentially be turning into friend zone, not boyfriend, you know. That I think that's important to understand. You're asking me, um, oh, that's a difficult one. The friend zone one, I can tell pretty quickly. I'm gonna not be attracted to this guy by the second or third date. Yeah, I can tell pretty quickly. And I'm gonna take a wild stab at it. So if a guy falls into the friend zone for you, it's probably a guy who is a little bit more beta. He doesn't really go for it. He doesn't really express himself. He plays it safe. Uh, what do you want to do tonight, Kezia? Uh, do you want to go here? Do you want to maybe do this? Is that cool? Is that okay? Is that all right? Can I can I can I hold your hand? Maybe yes. No. Okay. What what I, what my advice would be for that guy? Yeah, you know, like well, that would be the guy that would kind of fall in the friend zone for you. I'm assuming. Yes, it's it's just um, I prefer a guy to say you know I don't mind if a guy's taking me out and he gives me a kind of option. 
that's fine. Mm. Um, it's, you know what, it's the build up to that that's incredibly important. Um, things like how busy are you? How available are you? Mm-hmm. Um, I did this podcast recently. I don't really have a podcast anymore, but it was like one of my trainers, Pedro, I'm going to credit him for it. He made a really good point. He said, you know what? Um, he said, you've got to look, women look at your time the way that a man looks at a woman's body. And that was really interesting, which means if the woman is guarding her body and saving it and, and, all, the, and, and all that, then he's going to respect her a lot more and a man should always be like that with his time his time is fucking precious and that, really well said. that yeah i thought it was really good and i thought and that's like if you've got an ab- abundance of time available that can really it's such a simple thing like that can turn off a woman it's very that, true and that so i always say to guys that prevention is better than the cure so be mindful of, you know, how available are you making yourself for her? How available are you being? Are you saying to her, look, I'm free Monday till Friday, you know, pick your day. Or are you just saying to her, look, I've only got Wednesday free. That's it. Um, Just that small, small alteration can make a huge difference because then she's less likely to flake. And when she's actually on the date with you, she understands that you're giving up some precious time to be with her. Um, attraction, when you're trying to build attraction uh, from almost nothing, um, you know, it's it's incremental. It's it's little tiny things that you do that will create a complete shift in her perception of you. Mm-hmm. Moving on to the next thing, uh, after sex, right? So sometimes you hook up with a girl and then she never sees you again, which is sometimes confusing for some guys. And then, you know, sometimes she does want to see you again. What would you say makes a difference for women whether they want to see the guy after sex or not, whether it's a one night stand or they want to see him again. Um, one night stand, it's usually well. It depends on the circumstance. If they don't, do they know each other? They're in a friendship group. You know that can make a little oh, bit. Yeah, that's, that's a good. That's a good salty. Let's say they met online. This met on a dating app. They had a pretty good date. They got along. They had sex. The sex was good. And then the girl. The sex, might, was, good. The sex sure. was good. Oh, okay, the sex was well, good. <laughs> if they're if they're PWF subscribers, the sex was amazing, top notch, 001 percent material. Okay, so good sex, had a great orgasm, blah blah blah. Okay, fine. Um, and she doesn't see him again. What's the reason? Well, not not so much that, but when the girl's deciding whether she wants to see that guy again, what's going to be part of her decision making process? Okay, uh, I'm going to be very honest with you here. Um, so, if you if, if the girl doesn't have much of a career. She doesn't, you know, she's not particularly wealthy. Yeah, <laughs> let's get real here. She's looking at, you know, is that person a viable option that's going to give her a nice life? Um, that's still going on. Um, happens probably a bit less now. Women are making their own money and stuff, but it's still going on. Um, so she, she might be looking at that. Um, if that's not the case and she's wealthy or she, you know, has her own career, she doesn't need a man like that, then um, she's she is looking at whether there is um, any sort of relationship potential there because then she won't want to waste time. I, I just think this is where women and men are different. I mean, even if you get a, a, a very highly sexed woman, sex is still not going to be that important to her. That's the thing. A highly sexed woman, sex, sex is not going to be as important to her as a man with a low libido. But do you think though that for even for a woman that highly sexed woman, as you call it, that it's really hard to find great sex? Like at least that's what I've kind of been has always been my assumption that it's hard for women. It's easy for women to get laid. It's hard for women to get really good sex. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, but women, oh God, it's, I'm, try, I'm trying to explain this as best I can. Women, it's it's not physical. It is so it's 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 psychological. Mm-hmm. So so many women will have sex and not have an orgasm, and they'll say, "I had amazing sex," because it was the whole thing. It was the it's like the whole thing. It doesn't right. really have that like with men. It's got to have that involved for it to be good. Not with women. It's just being ravished or being like touched by a guy that she's been yearning for for ages. It can. It's like, I know that I've been with guys, I've wanted them so much, that literally they just have to like touch me. And that's like, you know, it feels incredible. 
and um, that will get me off. And and I and in fact, it's not just me. It's every woman I know has said that they've had that similar experience. A guy will not. A guy might like that, but he'll be like he'll want it to go further. Obviously. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of I kind of see what you're saying. Uh, there's there needs to be a lot of buildup and sexual tension. So if you have a situation, if you have a situation where sex happens and there's no buildup and no sexual tension, there's less of a chance that you're going to see the person again. I would say. Yes, but I was going to ask you a question. Haven't you ever been with a woman and you know she really wants you? You know, she, the one is kind of like she likes you, but I'm talking about the one who really, really wants you, and you've just sort of touched her and felt, oh my gosh, like she's she's literally crumbling. Because yeah, I'm actually a virgin. This this whole thing is a fashad. I've been uh, pretending this whole time. I'm actually good with chicks. No, yeah, I mean, I know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yes, it happens to men. It, it happens to us less often. Uh, but uh, yes, yes, yeah. I have seen the, the the thing with me though is if I'm being truthful, is I go in for it pretty fast. So I while I do believe in build up and I do like to let sexual tension build up, simply because I find that makes the sex better. I won't usually get to a point where it builds up so much because I just like I'm just like oh this chick is DTF like I'm just gonna go for it like I know when I what's DTF, reach a point, what's DTF? like down to fuck. Oh, I never heard that one. Really? Okay. We're both okay, learning no. some slang from the other side of the uh, ocean today. No, you know how old I am. Uh, no, no idea. I'm 40 years old, okay. so I'm not gonna know all these sort of like. Terminology was terminology as much. What was, the, what was the term you used if she squirts or if he squirts going for the pert? What, what? Well, if, it's, if it's got a skirt, it's worth a squirt. Oh, if it's got a skirt, it's worth a squirt. You like that one, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, another question I had for you, which I was kind of curious about what kind of DMs do you get? Because I can imagine you're getting some very, very interesting DMs. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just it ranges from a lot of things. Um, I get a lot of I love you, Kezia. I love you. I do get a lot of that. I do get the dick pics. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm not really, I only joined Instagram about a year ago. I'm not really like, I'm just not very good with Instagram. I just, I just, I've got this thing where I just don't really want to, I'm better on Facebook. I like Facebook a lot better. That's how you see. Now you know I'm really old. Um, but Instagram, it's like, I've noticed they blur the pictures, don't they? They send you. <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't know. I'm not that big on Instagram either. Yeah, but I, I get a lot of messages. I actually get really nice messages. Also, like thank you so much. You helped me so much. Um, I got your book. I don't know things like that. But yeah, I had a couple of famous people. Oh, intriguing. I'm waiting to get to the to pop my celeb cherry. Uh, Twitter also because it's funny on Twitter and Facebook. I've got this blue tick, but not uh -huh. on Instagram. And I just think uh, famous people contact, I think, mainly other people with the blue ticks. So I got them through Twitter and Facebook. Funny, huh? Interesting. Um, I, won't, I won't ask you who, although I am very curious. No, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you that. My curiosity is privately. I'm, 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 building, building by the moment. Okay, my next question would be, has anyone ever successfully slid into your DMs? Like, have you ever met up anyone who you didn't know in real life from Instagram or Twitter or Facebook? A famous, uh, famous guy, yeah. No, just, just anyone, really. Oh, right, not. Um, do, 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 do. I'm, I just want to answer this completely honestly. A bit. Um, not. No, I've never used. I've never used a dating app either. Interesting. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that. I think at some point. That's when we're going to maybe get into a bit of a debate there. Ooh, I like so, that. Um, no, that's why. So people that might be saying, "Oh, how come she?" Um, got um into how come she met a famous person from a dm but not like just some like a regular person well because the famous person i've already seen a preview of who they are what they're like and right. so it's not gonna i'm not gonna go there and have like um any disappointment they might get a disappointment but i well, actually they can see my youtube videos so it's a bit different but um yeah but I'm sure there's also been sex uh, famous people who failed sliding into your DMs. What would you say made the difference between a famous person who was successful in getting you out on a date and a famous person who failed? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to um, give away too much. Without though. giving any. Specific I'm just trying to think. Um, it hasn't been that many famous people. It's been like three people. It's not that many. So I don't want everyone to sit there and think, "Oh my God, you know, she's inundated." Uh, no, it's like three people, and uh, two of them I met, and one I didn't because the other one um, just wasn't my cup of tea. 
Mm -hmm. So the summary here is guys get famous and then you can get Kezia Noble on a date. Not true. No, no, no. If you have a YouTube channel or something and you, you're not famous and I can get a preview of who you are, cause I'm sorry, I'm not going with the fucking photograph. There is no yeah. damn way I'm meeting someone based on a photograph. I don't look like my photographs. You know, I look fucking 20 years old in my photographs. I, I They're, they're going to get a shock and I'm going to get a shock. So I don't I, know. I, I'm, I'm going to compliment you, which I know is something you say never to do. In I, don't video. I don't think you look that different than your photos at all. <laughs> Thank it you. very much like your photos. Anyway, so that's that's a whole aside. I love compliments. Uh, don't listen to that. Guys, I love compliments. Send them to me. Um, you get to an age where you need compliments to keep you going, like fuel. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question would be, actually, I want to ask this question. So, uh, you know, you're in the YouTube space. You follow the dating coaches. Who would you say you're honestly is your favorite date man, male dating coach? besides me, obviously, that you would say gives the best advice that you respect the most that you think has the best game? Okay. Uh, it's um, RSD Tyler. No! 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 Come on. Okay, so let's do the real answer now. No, that is the answer. Like, yeah. I've made him. Really? I love the guy. I love him. I met him too several times. But Kezia, you're 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 a smart, honest British woman. Gonna, look, I saw some things when I went to LA that he did, and I no didn't think it was cool. Um, but you asked me what advice he gives. His advice, his videos, are they staged? Are they not staged? I don't know. I don't know. But his advice is fucking gold what about just him as a man like i just cannot like his his hair his general get up his like fatness no, not my cup of tea. i didn't say i sleep with the guy um i don't like that look um but i liked how he used to look actually i like i like quite scrawny guys it's funny quite small guys i like shortish and thin um, but no, you asked me about his advice and his, I just think he goes very deep with his advice. Um, you have to remember that this was a guy who I think he, by his own admission, he is like a kind, he's on a spectrum or maybe I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. By his own admission, but I need to fact check that. But he, you know, so he's come a long way. Um, the people he hangs out with, what he's created, what he's done. He's very proactive. Um, but if you actually sit down, and, and I sometimes listen to some of the stuff he says, and I just think it's absolutely, it's really good. And um, his sidekick, Julian. <laughs> no longer a sidekick. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so there's some other people um, I think are good. Um, like, mis you know Mystery? So, so more, yeah. I've met him quite a few times, quite a few times. And what's interesting about him is what he teaches is it's okay, like whatever, but I think he's got natural game. And I said to him, why are you not teaching this what you've naturally got? And he just sort of went into his weird magician mode and didn't answer the question. <laughs> Watch this magic trick. <laughs> he does, he literally does start doing some, like, and I'm just like, can you just please stop? Because I was like, you've got natural game. And I was explaining his game uh, do you want me to carry on down there? No, no this, this is very interesting what you're saying because I've actually talked about this also. So Mystery has charisma. He has natural charisma. He was a magician before, stage magician before he was a PUA. And yeah. so when he goes out and he does these magic tricks, it's very congruent with his personality. Now, if someone like me went out and did mystery shit, it would be the most incongruent shit ever because that's like the complete polar opposite of my personality. Yeah, yeah. So I can see you're, the point you're trying to make is – he has natural charisma and what he does works for him, which I agree with that. I think he could be a lot better if he was more natural and he kind of dropped some of the, you know, some of the shit that he does, but he's kind of stuck in time. That's kind of my perspective on him. He's a little bit stuck in 2006. Yeah. I tell, I tell you the truth. The last time I saw him was probably, it was years ago. It was like 2010 or no, 11, 12, something like that. So it wasn't so um, that sort of thing that he was doing wasn't as aged as, as it is now. But, no. but the the thing that he's got, and um, I watched this in a film, and it was a, it was about Frank Sinatra, and there's this amazing scene where you know all the women wanted to fuck Frank Sinatra, and 
the women were talking about his his attraction, his sex appeal, and they go, you don't know whether you want to fuck him or mother him. And I thought, that's it. That's what mystery has. Some men have this thing, you want to fuck them and mother them at the same time. It's very, it's a like, it's, a, it's playing with vulnerability and strength at the same time. It's a very, very um, advanced form of game. Um, He's probably got it naturally. Frank Sinatra probably had it naturally. But I said to him, if you can decode, decipher, break down that, that's going to really go a long way more than magic tricks. The magic yeah. tricks get the attention, but you know, you're not going to have someone doing magic tricks for you for two hours. You know? He's also got to stop telling guys to get a girl Skype because most young tricks don't even know what Skype is <laughs> nowadays. That's kind of sweet, though. <laughs> well, you're like, like an 18 year old club girl. You say, "Hey, let me get your Skype." She's gonna be like, no, <laughs> "What the fuck are you talking about? What you is a Skype?" Don't you think that can work? It can be quite funny. You can like, you can sort of, you, you're like, you know, this. You're an analog in a digital world. You know, I think. Yeah, you can... I mean, maybe some guys can pull it off, but like the average guy, no. Like he's gonna, he's already nervous. He's the interaction's already kind of on a rocky footing. No, no, I know. He's like, can I get your s s Skype? Like. The fuck is that gonna work? That guy will do shit. I think I think that you're absolutely right. Yeah, I, I, sometimes I. The problem is when I start having conversations with people like yourself, people who are like in this world and teach, I just go on advanced level straight away and start coming up with all sorts of like fun, crazy things that you can do. But yeah, okay, fine. The guy starting out absolutely don't ask for Skype. I mean, that, that is what, what you're describing is definitely a challenge because when I'm like, you know, answering questions and like the question is something like, I spent two years DMing this girl. We still haven't met up yet. What should I do? And there's like a million screenshots. I'm looking at that and it's really hard for me to relate at this point. And I used to be that guy. Well, not that bad, but I used to be kind of, you know, pretty bad. And so I'm, I have to like force myself to relate to that because it's like, dude, what the fuck should you do? Like, don't spend two years DMing a girl. Like, that's what you should do. But I, you know, obviously that's not going to help anyone if I just write that. So I have to like kind of go back in time and put myself in their shoes. No, which is weird. Um, speaking on RSD, Tyler, I do want to touch on this. So I do agree with you that he has some deep insights. I think he had a lot more circa 2012, 2013. Yeah. I had a lot more respect for RSD back then. I think that the big issue I personally have with them is they just say some things that are just so not true. Like looks don't matter. Like, come on. Like looks don't matter at all. Like zero percent. Like girls don't care at all about looks. Like, are we are we really gonna believe this? Like, this is just pure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Um. Okay, I I've got some opinions about this. Do um, sure. Okay. Well, I I was kind of saving it for like when we start talking about um, dating apps and things, which is I. We, we can we can get into it now. Yeah. So uh, let's get into that now. Okay. So that okay. Let's use that as a segue then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. I believe that dating apps will only work for people who are good looking or have sort of, or can take a good picture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, we're not talking about subjectively here. We're not talking about what I find attractive, what mm -hmm. you find attractive. We're talking about just if someone has, they're quite slim and they have like a half decent face and they get the right angle. Yeah, they've got a, they've, they've got a hope, they've got a chance. Mm -hmm. If someone looks like, like really unattractive, physically unattractive, like clinically obese or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's a girl on there, the fetish or something, he's not going to get any results because the picture is what the people look at. So yes, looks do matter. Okay, I agree with you there. I don't agree with RSD Tyler there. Where I agree with Tyler is that when you meet somebody and you immediately look at them and think they're not my type, it, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the, it's, it, that's the end. You can build attraction. I know I've, I've, I've seen it happen to me. I have mm. met guys who I've looked at them and you know, I've just immediately um, sort of canceled them in my head thinking they're not, they're not for me, just the way they look, it's just not for me. And then I've looked at the way they've interacted in the room. It could be the way they danced, it could be the way that they just spoke with their bodies, it could be the way they approached me. And then suddenly something's changed. It can be suddenly or it can be gradual, actually. You cannot get that from a photograph. And this, this, is, this is why I don't use dating apps, because I don't know how many people have swiped left, whatever it is, that could have been potentially my type, and how many people I just went and said yes to based on a photograph. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so I've actually heard this, uh, 
this argument quite often. So I'm, 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 I have a prepared speech to answer this. So this is what I you're have, saying. I have a prepared rebuttal for the prepared speech. <laughs> what, what, you're say, what you're saying is actually a very common criticism that I hear of dating apps. And I'm going to preface this by saying that if we, if I made a Tinder account for you, I could get you 10 million matches in five hours. So you would do quite well on dating apps. But that, that that's a whole aside. We're talking about guys. So this is the way I see it. Um, everyone has a sexual market value, right? That's, you know, let's, let's just say universal sexual market value. So let's say you are, so the black, the men go in their own way, black pill community say that you have your sexual market value and that's it. So if you're a five, you're a five and you're fucked. That's not true. If you're a five, you can never be a 10, but you can become a seven through going to the gym, getting jacked, good fashion, good grooming, good style. A guy, pretty much every guy can improve their sexual market value by two points. Right, so a five can be a seven, uh, eight can be a nine and a half, something like that. Three can be a five. What the good thing about online dating is it doesn't matter what your sexual market value is, it matters what you portray your sexual market value to be. So, what most guys are doing, if a guy's a six in their pictures, they look like a five through good pictures. If you're a six and you know, you, you know, all about this, like you know, you can make yourself look better in pictures yeah. as a six, you can make yourself look like a seven, even a seven and a half. It's like very, very low key catfishing, right? So, if, if you're so, let's say that your sexual market value is a five and you're my client, I'm gonna tell you to get a haircut, I'm gonna tell you to get your facial hair groomed, I'm gonna tell you to get a stylist, get your fashion order, I'm gonna tell you to go to the gym. And if you're five, I'm gonna make you a six or six and a half. Then I'm gonna get you pictures where you look like a seven and a half. And then you're gonna start getting some matches. Now, yes. I do so, that, for, no, but I do that for my students. I didn't say a five, I was talking about obese i was talking about people who are physically oh, okay we're talking about like quasimodo kind of people here they haven't got a hope in hell oh, yeah, but, but those guys are not yeah they're, they're not they're not, not that's what I'm talking about no but that's yeah. what i'm talking about i said if the person is kind of average and can take a good picture that's fine they've got a chance in hell i was talking about the really ugly guys and you know if i'm going to be honest here a lot of my students are first of all i've got a, a percentage of them that are extremely extremely handsome men um, the, the vast majority are average, some girls types, not some girls type. Then I've got slow, slightly below average. And then I've got guys who are, yeah, even by their own admission, they're, they're just, you know, they will not take a good picture. They will. I, I would make the argument, though, that the grossly obese guy, he needs to lose weight either way. Like, he's not going to. Of course. No, 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 of course. But, but I, but this is my point. If you meet a woman in a bar or whatever, yes, she's going to have the same reaction as when she looks at your photograph which is that's not my type and there's the guy in real life and he's not my type. But then comes um, body language, conversation skills, facial expressions. So this is a big one is facial expressions. A few, um, I, I've seen so many people who look good on pictures and then you meet them and they're not ugly. They do look like the picture, but they start talking and they've got facial expressions like you have, like I have. And facial expressions can really make someone beautiful or ugly. And again, that's something that, this goes to sex appeal and looks. How many times have you spoken to a girl and she's pretty and you thought, you know what, I don't actually fancy her, I don't know why. And then you've spoken to the girl and you thought, oh, she's not my type. And you've spoken, and then you've said, oh my gosh, she's sexy. There's something mm. sexy about her. I have, a, I have a, mm -hmm. Well, that's a whole different aside. I have like a physical type and an emotional type. And uh, the physical type, I can tell like right when I start, the, before she even starts talking, just by her body and her face. The emotional type, it takes me some time to figure out. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the argument I would always make is that online dating can work for like 95, 98% of guys. Like guys think that you have to be like a giga chad, as the kids are calling it nowadays, or whatever. Have you ever heard that term, giga chad? Of course not. <laughs> Yeah, it's a red pill term. But anyway, so uh, I would say 95 to 98 percent of guys can crush it online if they're willing to put in the work. Yeah. I would say the fat guy does need to lose weight. And I would make the argument that uh, when you're talking about, yeah, so a guy who's ugly can have success in real life, but only if he has really good game. And the problem with being ugly and having good game is when you're initially approaching a girl, you start off at a below average point. So it's, you really need, it's going to be harder for a fat guy to have good game than a guy who's in good shape. It just is because when you approach a girl and she's already like looking at you like, oh, and then, yeah, of course it does happen. There's some guys who are so naturally confident, have such a high level of swagger that they can't overcome that. It's just very rare because, you know, like. I've seen it. I have seen it. He's, um, he, he's so annoying. I've tried to get him to be a trainer. 
and he just he's got so much game but he doesn't have to break it down like unbelievable game the guy's overweight not good looking at all not good looking um i've never it seen happens, a, but they're rare I've never seen a guy clean up like this i've never seen it his name's alex k oh you won't mind me mentioning his name he's of course he's named alex winner but, name oh of course all the alexes are amazing um anyway Okay, but what about just to and I, I do agree that men can. By the way, I'm not. I I don't personally go on dating apps because I find them a waste of time, because I I like to have a preview of the date that I'm going to mm. see. So if there was some sort of video thing, I'd probably be well up for that. But I'm not doing on a fucking photograph. No way. Well, you can uh, you can do that. You can easily request a FaceTime. I know. Um, that that. Do that. Um, I've got this funny thing. I, I think I will probably use it one day, but just not for now. I like organic. I like meeting people organically. But okay, that's. But I, I appreciate that most people are sort of going in that direct. They're kind of. It's a mix, actually. A lot of people are coming off the dating apps. A lot of people I've spoken to are coming off for a bit because they said it's just they've been saturated with it, especially mm -hmm. with these lockdowns and stuff. They want to kind of meet people more organically, and people are really up for being approached right now. We've noticed that. But um, what that's about? That's interesting you say that. I, I kind of agree with that as well. A lot of people think that you can't really approach it nowadays, but I disagree with that. Oh my God. No, no, no. We, 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 we run courses. And when things started opening up in, in England, there was a, like a few months where there was no lockdowns and stuff. And our students, we never saw such good results because people just like, I am begging for human contact. I don't mm -hmm. want to see another photograph or a filtered photograph or someone's fucking TikTok video. I want to really be, and you're just like, everyone was just like, it was the summer of love, it felt like, or some shit. Um, can I just go back to the point that you made? Yeah. We're talking about the sort of like small percentage of guys who are like obese and stuff, but what about guys who are 60 years old, they don't want to meet another 60 year old. They want to meet a hot 25 year old girl. What's going to happen to them on a, on a dating app? The girls are just not even going to, they'll be like, bye bye granddad. And yet so many old guys on our course, when they do meet girls in real life and approach them, get those girls that if they'd have seen them on an app, they wouldn't have given them a second. Uh, those guys need to go on seeking arrangement. That's where they're going to meet those 25 year old girls. Uh, for real, like I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah, no, okay. So no, I I, that, by the way, I'm not. I'm not challenging you for the sake. But I was genuinely. That's a genuine question. No, no, I got you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the 65. I actually never really. Well, my, my dad's. What, well, how old's my dad? He's 55. He's dating a 30 year old girl. So actually, I guess I kind of have that in the family. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I he's that. 55, and she said, "Did they meet on a dating app?" No, they met through friends. But my, 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 my dad is like an old school Russian guy. He doesn't even know what dating app is. Like he's, he's the kind of guy that, you know, when you're watching porn and it says hot girls in your area, he'll be like, hey, is there really hot girls in my area? I'm like, no, dad. That's like a fucking, that's like a scam. He's like, but it says that there's hot girls in my area. Should I click on it? I'm like, no, don't click on it. Like, what the fuck? He's like that kind of guy. Guys dating a 30 year old. Yeah, something like that. 30 ish, something like that. She's like my age. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's take some questions because we got so many building up. All right, wow, there is a shitload of questions. <laughs> Someone said, "What if you don't have a dad?" Uh, I don't know. If you don't have a dad, I'll be your dad. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, can a guy have a setup where he has threesomes with other girls, but the girl doesn't want any other man? That's an interesting question. I hate threesome questions. I hate them because I just can't think of anything worse than sleeping with a woman. All right, hold on. Can a guy have a setup where he? What about what about a threesome with two men though? Oh yeah, that for sure. Such a double standard, Kezia. I'm sorry, I'm not going near women. I don't find don't find them attractive. Sorry. Yeah, I'm the same way with uh, other men. <laughs> Can a guy have a setup where he has threesomes with other girls, but the girl doesn't want any other man? I don't understand that. Girls, girls. See, basically, he's saying, is it possible to have a situation where you're with a girl and you guys have threesomes, but only with chicks? You don't have threesomes with other dudes. God, is this question for me or you? I'm, uh, I'm threesome ones. I'm. I really don't. That's the one thing I sort of stick away from is threesome questions. I have. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take it real quick. Yes, it is possible. It can be challenging. I think the best source for that is actually Jamal because that's what he has going on right now. Uh, me personally, full disclosure, I've actually never been that big on group sex. I've had threesomes, I've had foursomes, I've had fivesomes. It's just not really up my alley sexually. I like to do it for the lulls and for the uh, 
for the uh, just experience, but it's not really up my alley sexually. I've always preferred just like one-on-one -on -one sex. So I'm not really the best resource for that either, to be honest. I think JMOF is. Yeah, honestly, I, that's my one thing. I don't really do threesome questions much. Uh, actually, one question, another question I have for you. What do you think about the whole um, modern feminism, social justice warrior movement? If I say what I feel, I'm going to, I've already, I had a big argument with them. I, okay, I basically was called a, a penis panderer. <laughs> penis panderer. So I, um, I, I, I just basically said International Women's Day is a load of shit, just like International Man's Day. It's all bullshit. It was just, you know. Because International Women's Day, I was just looking on Instagram, it was like people making fucking cupcakes and stuff. And I was like, this is so embarrassing, you know. I just I just, I just, just felt really embarrassed about it. And I put something on Facebook and they were like, oh my God, you penis panderer with your pictures and things. Penis so panderer. I put up a really sexual picture of me, like you know, that kind of thing. Something oh. that would really fucking wind them up. And I put hashtag penis panderer. And I, I like <laughs> penis panderer. I'm sorry, I like men attention. I love men attention. Um, and, and I was like, but there's, surely that's me being a feminist by, be, by just, you know, being open and saying, I'm, I'm very comfortable with men attention. I, I, like, I like the feeling of being, um, what's the word that they use? Not subjugated. What's the word that they use when you're- The object of your desire or something like that? No, 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 but it's a more- Subjugated? I don't know. Oh, anyway, it's like, I like- Let's we'll just, we'll just stick with penis panda. Yeah, I like, well, fine, I don't mind, you know, whatever. Um, so what do I think of them? Uh, not not for me. They're not for me. <laughs> they don't represent me. I don't need them fighting my corner. Um, yeah. I know I've done it. I've never looked at men as below me or above me. I've just always looked at them as equals. And I just think if, if we all looked at each other as equals, that's all we need to do. Um, I've, I've just never, I've never felt men were the, the enemy at all. Mm -hmm. I like men. I think I think a lot of women feel the same way you do. It's just like a lot of them. Sorry, Adam Purvis. Is that your real name? <laughs> um, objectified. Yes, I don't mind being objectified. It's fine. I think a lot of women feel like that. It's just I think I think that it's like not politically correct to say right now. But I, the, my my feeling has always been this: like a lot of feminists have say that oh you know men are like you know they they don't want but like if you ask men. 99.9% .9 of men are in favor of women getting equal pay and having equal rights, right? So it's, we, we don't oppose that. No one's fighting that. What, what men don't like, or some men don't like, most men don't like, is the idea that like we have to have like a sex battle and they're like, you can't make a compliment to a woman and then that makes you a, a predator. It's just like all this nonsense that goes along with it. So I've yeah. Had, you know what? In my life personally, I've had more women try and bring me down than men. Oh, I can definitely see that. 100%. I've, had, I've had so many issues with women and, you know, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. My, my experience has been better with men. It doesn't mean I'm saying men are better than women. Just my personal experience has been that men, uh, it's, it's been a better one with men than women. But anyway, uh, well, I have another I question from Prince O. Where does she meet the majority of men she dated during the pandemic? Um, I was dating a guy for about, she, so it's me he's talking about. Not mm -hmm. with the general. Okay, so yeah. I met a guy recently. Um, I've just split up from him. We were dating eight months, and that was in the park. He came, approached me in the park. Um, he actually recognized my videos. That was he mm -hmm. went, oh, Kezia, like that. And a lot of people do come up and say, oh, you're Kezia. Um, but he bumped into me. He said, oh, you're Kezia, and then had a chat for a few seconds, didn't think anything of it. He was not my type. Um, he wasn't ugly. He was young. I, I do tend to go for very young guys. But um, he wasn't my type, really, even though he was very young. And then we bumped into each other again. And because it was during that time when you were only a allowed, like, exercise, and I don't know if America had the same stupid... Yeah, something like that, yeah. Don't get me started on these fucking tyr tyrannical rules. 100% <laughs> like, oh, agreed. I hate this COVID lockdown nonsense. Oh, bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on. And then I, I bumped into him a second time, and it's actually me that said, oh, God, you know, I'm doing my one-hour walk, my, my out-of-prison walk. If you want to, you know, join me, you can. And I remember he just joined me and then um, went off from there, went for drinks, and, blah, and we were with each other for eight months. Um, he's seeing someone else now. It's quite interesting. And um, I said to him, "Where did because we're friends, and I said, where did you meet her? And he was like, Whole Foods. That is the place to meet women, Whole Foods right now. It's happening in Whole Foods. 
it goes down in the kale section. That's where all the uh, fornication goes down. I think Whole Foods, I think Parks, in, in, in London right now, I've so many people are getting chatted up and hit on in, in Parks because there's nowhere really else to go. So it's kind of worked out well in a funny way. Because you know, like everyone was going, oh, where do I meet women? All the women are in the park, <laughs> along with all the dogs, along with all the grandmas, along with everyone else. Everyone's in these fucking parks. So there's loads of people chatting up each other now in, in parks. Yeah, I mean, I've met quite a few girls at Whole Foods, actually. I was, when I used to live in Los Angeles, I was pretty notorious in my local Whole Foods. Whenever I would go into the Whole Foods, the guy behind the meat counter would be like, yeah, like, because he knew that I was going to, like, chat up some girls, so. The whole um, I hope that help answers um, a question for Prince O there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yo, Alex, a bit off topic, but do you plan on living in an apartment for the rest of your life or you'll buy a house one day? I think I'll buy a house one day. Just quickly answer that. Okay. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, I want to – there's a lot of, like, dumb questions, but I want to find a good one. Let's have huge power choosing again. Okay, do you think – okay, this is an interesting one. Do you think during this era the girls have huge power choosing which guy they will date? I feel like men apply many strategies to attract or impress a girl to get her attention. What do you think? Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to review this question again. Okay, so it's kind of like why, did this, why does this person – uh, sorry, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, why does his why does this person think that the women have a huge power choosing which guys they'll date? Um, I think I think it's they they've always had more of a power than guys have had, but I don't think it's particularly any more than than it was before. Um, I would actually disagree with you on that, and I would the reason the reason I would give is because uh, I think social media changed the name of the game. So twenty thirty years ago. Uh, a woman could meet a guy through friends, through at a bar, and you know, through coworkers, right? Through university. Like my parents met at university, right? That was like how you met people back then. I think nowadays, any attractive girl with a social media presence is getting DM'd like crazy. So she just has access to way more guys. Absolutely. No, sorry. You're absolutely right. Of course, you are right. Um, but what's ha happening, it's kind of like there's another side to this. Okay. So you're 100% on the money there. But there's another side to it, which is these women are increasingly looking less and less like their social media accounts. The filters are getting more clever. The filters are getting heavier. And they're not looking like that at all. And I think a lot of these women are eventually meeting up with guys and the guys are saying, uh-uh. The big thing that I hear from a lot of, because I know a lot of my male friends have said, oh, I'm, I've met this girl on social media. I met this girl on Instagram. And, like, and I always say to them, what's the, what's the most common thing about the girls that puts you off? They go, they're fat. You just don't see on social media. And with the girls, it's he's short. Or the girls, <laughs> went, no, no, that, that, that's just like the most common one. I don't hear men going, oh, she was too short. I hear so many men going, she's fat. Like her body looks like that. Like, you know, Kim Kardashian in the pictures, but she's just fat. Right. That's so I think you don't know about that side that's going on. You don't know how she could be meeting guys and the guy's just like, you don't look like that. Because so you you must know so many of them don't. It's it's really frightening. I know so okay. many girls that go to the gym and I because they hashtag because I go to this this very nice gym in, in Kensington and everybody kind of like wants to hashtag that they go to that gym. And I, I see the girls in that gym and I look at the Instagram account because the hashtags come up and I'm like, that's not the same person. And they're getting guys going, oh my God, you're beautiful. You're, you're this, you're that. Fine. So her you know, ego is being um, inflated. But at some point, she's going to have to meet one of those guys. How do you know that the guys aren't saying, shit, I'm getting out of here? Just like all my male friends have said they've had to do on numerous occasions. I think once you get to a certain level, that is very true that this happened. I think once you get to a certain level, you can almost have a spidey sense. Like, I feel like I at this point can tell if a chick is a secret fatty or not. Uh, not all the time, but like I would say 95% of the time. It's still, I still occasionally, one gets past, you know, the gatekeep. Uh, in which case, I always tell guys this, and I sometimes get criticized for this for being a dick. Uh, but I say this if a girl doesn't look like her pictures, this is what I do. I don't waste an hour, I don't waste two hours. I give her a hug, I say, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm just not feeling it. And then that's it. I wasted 30 seconds of my life. So that's the advice I always give guys. Be polite, but just walk away. Don't waste an hour. Don't waste two hours. 
No, you you are very good at this. I mean, this is this is what you do, and you probably have got a trained eye that can see like that's yeah. a bad idea, or she's got too much filters on. But think about all so many guys that don't, and they've been sucked into that. I also there's something else that's going on. I've got a video coming out about Instagram and dating and stuff like that. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are DMing and stuff each other, but not meeting up. So yeah. I have a friend, and she's very well known on Instagram. She's she is good looking in real life also, but she's got a really, really like very hot Instagram account. And she's told me that she has footballers um, DMing her, celebrities, and she's eager to meet them, but they don't meet. I was like, what's going on here? That's fucking crazy. Why are they not meeting her? And it's almost becoming like, we're getting into this weird world where people just sort of think, oh yeah, well she's responded and that's kind of good enough. It's like, I, I know I could do it, but they haven't got the kind of motivation to go and actually meet these people. Yeah, so very true. I think there's a lot of validation seeking that's going on now. And validation is very addictive. Like I'm personally guilty of this so much. When I put out a video, I'm checking the YouTube analytics and I'm seeing, and if the video gets a lot of likes, I feel good about myself. I just get a dopamine rush. If the video doesn't do good, I feel a little bummed out. And I have to catch myself doing this time and time again. So validation can be very, very addictive. It's, I think. it's toxic. It's fucking toxic yeah. because I'm naturally an attention seeker. Like even since I was a little girl, I, yeah. so I'm just one of those people. I need, I need, I, I crave men attention and things like that. It's Ever since really, I was a little girl. I just don't care about women's attention at all. When a woman gives me a compliment, I'm just like, oh, okay, thanks. But with men, I've always been like that. Um, Anyway, so I knew that's why I'm not really prolific on Instagram. I don't put many photographs up because I know I'll get, I'll go down that rabbit hole and mm -hmm. I will get fucking psycho with it. Like, oh my God, you know, this, I didn't get that many likes for this picture. So I know myself to just control myself and say, no, stay away from it. But it's actually, you've made all these sort of like artificial attention seekers, people who weren't like that before. They were living pretty okay lives, pretty healthy, you know mentally healthy lives and then instagram has made them into fucking monsters it's yeah. really, instagram's the worst thing out there I, I twitter is worse is worse actually and it, for the different reasons but instagram it's just bullshit it's the lives i know people their lives are not like those lives that are being posted yeah that's that's very true that's very true uh, well, actually, this kind of leads me to a question why do um why do women flake like, I think this is an issue a lot of guys have, uh, flaking. What can guys, why do women flake and what can guys do to minimize flaking? Flaking from like, uh, you've met the girl and you've got her number. What's the, what's the, yeah, you, you met a girl, you got her number. It was a good interaction. And then maybe you're talking over text and then she disappears on you. Or maybe you set up a date and she doesn't show up. Okay. So basically, um, I love this question. There's a couple of things going on here that a guy needs to look at when he starts thinking, okay, I'm getting flaky numbers. So um, the interaction, first of all, you need to make it as fucking impactful as possible, okay? Because that will, that will be the the, the 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 deciding factor, really, that one, if she's going to, you know, follow up with you or not. But what most guys do is they have an okay interaction and they think, I'll put more effort in the text part. I'll put more effort in the text part. Um, and that's, it, that's, Far less effective. You want to have the best interaction you can possibly have, then have a good follow up. But a lot of guys have a okay interaction. She gives her number because she thinks there's potential. She sees potential. Mm -hmm. That's why she's done it. She sees there's potential there for something. I don't know mm -hmm. what yet she's thinking, but there is some sort of potential. Um, and then what happens is either he fucks up in the messages. Mm -hmm. um, he looks needy or she just at some point walking home or whatever the whatever potential she saw whatever small impact you had has faded it's mm -hmm. faded off and that's why I always say to guys you've got to do the hard work guys you've got to make sure that that interaction is brilliant because I promise you I can't I've got text messages that are brilliant and they will help you but they will not resuscitate a really, really bad interaction. They're just not going to do it. There's not this one magic text that always happens. Why not just work on that interaction? Because then you'll find that the follow-up you can be quite sloppy with even. You could actually be quite sloppy with it. And um, it doesn't matter because the interaction is the thing that has 
for me, I'm telling you personally, I mean, I've had guys where I've spoken to them, great interactions. Text has been a little bit, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coach, I can see it, I can analyse what they're doing wrong, but it hasn't made that much of a difference. But if the interaction has been okay, enough for me to give his num my number, but nothing, like I'm not looking forward to their text message, then the text message then can can do quite a lot of damage. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. The advice I always give to guys to, uh, I agree with what you said, but the advice I, the general advice I give to guys to minimize flaking is this. One, run optimal game. So again, don't be needy, don't do any bad shit, optimally close. Uh, two, run volume, right? So if you're talking to 10 girls and one of them stops responding, it's not really a big deal because you have nine girls that you're talking to. So that's, that's the answer I always give to that, to optimal game and high volume. You know something, I do agree with what you're saying. You you look at, you do a very holistic approach. I've noticed that, um, which is great. Um, but there's something um, that I've noticed with, with guys, as well as girls, is that when they have that, that approach, which is, you know, you've got 10 numbers and you, you, you send out the text message. There's still, with guys, always that one or two girls that they're really waiting to hear back from. They're really waiting to hear mm -hmm. back from. That's the thing you can't completely get rid of. And that's sure. when becoming a little bit needy i'm telling you it all comes down to neediness the girl is trying to ascertain when she meets the guy is he in demand that's what she wants to know is he in demand is he busy does he have a lot going on um I, like, you go. I don't want that girls don't want to be their main priority they don't yeah. want it that easy um so the neediness is the big thing and yeah i'm, I'm sorry i'm going off on a tangent here sorry i think we've got another question I, no, that, that, that's, that's a fair point. And I do think that, like, you know, that neediness torpedoes so many relationships and is extremely unattractive. And I always tell guys, like, to kill these. There's nothing wrong with being in love with a girl and wanting a girl, but it has to be after you get to know her and not just based on a 20 second interaction. Like, guys fall in love too easily. Oh, she's the one. Okay, but you know nothing about her. Like, what if she fucking kills puppies at night? Like, you don't know that. You just I know, to... I know. But you know, there are people who are just not going to listen to that. Who are yeah, caught up. Sure. It's the it's the thunderbolt effect, and I've had it. And no one can talk you out of it. And you can, no one can use logical reasoning to say yes. He might sure. be an axe murderer. He might be a fucking pedo. You don't. Need, you're not even listening anymore because you've got the thunderbolt for both men and women. It's fucking powerful. Um, but then, how I teach my clients is, I say to them. Let's show you how to hide it. Hide the neediness. It's mm. hard, but if you can hide the neediness, she might not be able to smell it on you. And then you've got a chance. I know. A lot of guys can't help themselves. Like they will like they'll send a text to the girl and then it'll be like 30 seconds. They're posting in the PWF forums. Hey Alex, what should I say? Another 30 seconds go by and they've double texted the girl already before I even had a chance to like log on to the computer and give them advice. So yeah, I, it's, it's, some guys just can't help themselves. By the time like I get to answering their question, they've already quadruple texted her and like fucking sent her 20 dick pics and I don't even know. What else? This is this is an interesting one. You two would make great business partners or get married, one or the other. Curveball. We're actually business partners and we got married last night. So uh, that's the big uh, reveal. Okay. Uh, now this one we've already kind of answered. Um, some real woman sex is not important. I'm like, this is some real BS. For, no, this is, this is not. Okay. This is an interesting one. Alex, ask her if she can just feel a man's energy when she talks with them, or does it have... So, can you feel a man's energy just like when yeah. you're talking to them? Yeah, yeah, I can. Very much so. Um, I'm very, very good at, at spotting real confidence and fake confidence. I'm extremely good at it. Um, and if that's what... I think that's what he means by energy, and yes, I can tell nervous energy. Um, I, I can actually break it down because of what I do. So, I'll be like, okay, this is... You know, this is why I know he's nervous. This is the indicator. Where there's a lot of women um, who will just be like, I get a weird vibe about him and I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. But I can break it down. But yes, um, I can pick up on energy. I think women can pick up on energy more than men. I think men get distracted with the girl's tits and looks and things like that. Fine, that's just, you know, that's the way that they are designed. But I think a woman is a little bit more um, in tune with energy, which is confidence and neediness and nerves. And that's why I spend a lot of time with my clients teaching them how to really hide neediness. It can be done, but it, like you said, it really needs a lot of, you need a lot of discipline. 
What advice would you give to a guy who just come, who just has a weird vibe to him? Like, you know, like those clients that are just like kind of like strange. Like, what would you tell them? Well, we break down what the strangeness is. Usually you can start breaking it down. Is it body language? Um, is it the way that they construct a sentence? Um, is it their laugh? I, I, I'm not one of those people who goes, oh, you have this weird vibe, because they've probably been told that at school or by, by in, in high school by girls, like, oh, you're a weirdo or something. They know that there's something off about them. They just don't know where, ex I, that's what I do is I pinpoint. I say, that's what you're doing, and women can't stand it, or I can't stand it, or you're making me feel uncomfortable. I, you know, I have my problems also when I'm with guys, like I sometimes make guys feel uncomfortable and I would love someone to sit down and go, it's that little thing that you do there, it's this. And then at least I can say, right, okay, let me tweak that. But I'm just going, stop being like that, you know? Really, that happens to you? Like you guys tell you that they feel uncomfortable when they're with you? <laughs> yes, but they don't think I'm a weirdo or anything, but they just, um, well, they find me too opinionated, um, I don't know, they say too passionate. I would make the argument that guys who feel uncomfortable with you are guys who are like not really that alpha, like. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, 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 it's, they're all beta. That's the way I look at it. I mean, I'm not saying all oh, every alpha guys attract to me, far from it, but I'm just saying that I know that beta guys don't seem to be very comfortable around me and all the guys I've, that have ever been attracted to me have been alpha guys. Mm -hmm. I'm saying all alpha guys are attracted to me. I would say that there's probably been a lot of beta guys who've been attracted to you. You just didn't know about it because they didn't approach you. Um, no, I just don't think. Oh, I th don't you think the be beta guys usually like really kind of nice, quiet, sweet girls? You don't find that? You really sit there. No, a lot of uh, why, why, there's this whole phenomenon of like really rich CEOs who pay like BDSM dominatrices to get fucking yeah, ass, right? So a lot of them, a lot of the beta guys, they want like a like a more opinionated, outspoken woman. Yeah, but it's also, you no. Know, but when you pay for sex, there's something psychologically very different about it. That's why celebrities go and have sex with women, um, uh, pay for sex with women, even though celebrity, male celebrities really don't need to. They've got it on right. tap. It's because they like the idea of sleeping with a woman that doesn't really want them because they're not used to it anymore. They want the old experience of thinking, you know, um, I've had to go and sort of do this, you know, and, and, and go hunt for it almost. And they have to do it through money. It's the only way they can do it now. But that experience of where they're the ones chasing in a in a in, in a closer way as possible, whereas before now it's just on tap. That's that's why so many male celebrities who don't need it go to prostitutes. Yeah, that's that's a whole weird thing. But honestly, to kind of go back to the earlier point, my honest and alpha not even off on one this is not helping anyone at all, is it? This <laughs> my honest to prostitutes. <laughs> this is this is how you negotiate a good deal with a hooker. So uh, no, so my, my honest my honest opinion of you would be that you're not you are yes you're outspoken you're opinionated but you're not like uh, you you're a very feminine woman like I can yeah. tell it's just the way you communicate and like the way you carry yourself and your body language like you're very feminine and you that's very clear why you like a more dominant alpha guy mm. like it's just very apparent um, so it's kind of been my take. I think I know I think you're. Uh, I think that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, that's, you know, most people read me completely wrong. I've got a very masculine kind of mindset in many ways, but emotionally I'm quite feminine. Yeah. Uh, what does she think of things on dating? This is a very appropriate question. What does she think on dating girls with OnlyFans? Are you familiar with this OnlyFans yeah, phenomenon? OnlyFans is. Yeah, I understand it. Um, I think it's fine. I don't know what she thinks on dating girls with OnlyFans. I think, you know what? It's gonna, it's gonna happen more and more. You can't fight it. Women are very thirsty for attention and the thirst is getting, everyone's thirsty on both sides. Women for, for attention for their bodies and stuff like that. And men, you know, who are thirsty after that. I think um, when you start saying, I'm not gonna, I, I guarantee anyone that says, I'm not going to date a woman with only fans or get involved with a woman with only fans, I guarantee in about three years' time, they'll all be doing it because every fucking woman will have OnlyFans, including me fucking Paige. It's just, it's happening. Give, give the PWF guys a discount when you create your OnlyFans. Give us the give us the uh, the twenty percent off. We're all a bunch of cheap fucks. Yeah, I mean, I actually did a, I did a, I, I was hooking up with a chick who had an OnlyFans about a year ago. The guys who follow my channel probably can guess who it is, and uh, it was interesting. <laughs> I did a video with her, and uh, it was interesting to see that, despite all the value I give, 
and my OnlyFans video got way more views than my regular content. So that's interesting. I'll have to check that out. That sounds very interesting. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's take a few more questions. Okay. So this one, we're kind of a lot of these we've actually already answered indirectly. Uh, and truly care about looks. Okay. This is somewhat interesting. How to tell? How to tell if a girl is telling the truth about her lay count? I don't know how you tell the truth about her lay count. Hmm. Is there a trick? He's kind of asking me, is there a trick question? I mean, my, I think that once you get to a certain level of social intuition and social acuity, you can kind of tell, like I can usually tell by the way a girl carries herself, her approximate lay count. But to me, her lay count doesn't really matter. Really? You tell me yeah. mine. Go. I'm not going to answer it. You tell me mine. Tell you your lay count? Yeah. I won't say if you're off the mark or not. I just want to see, and I'll tell you offline how accurate you were when this is between off. between fifty and a hundred. <laughs> My life. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's more than a hundred. I think it's probably more than like forty. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after. Uh, but, okay, that's interesting. Uh, but so my take on that, yes. Yeah, so I don't know how to tell because um, I no, I don't. I don't know because um, I don't lie about mine to guys. Um, and I've never had that question. How can you tell? Well, you answer that, Alex. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that probably most guys wouldn't be able to do. But honestly, I don't think a woman's lay count matters. Like, I don't care how many guys, have, as long as the number isn't zero. Because if she's a virgin, I think there might be something weird about her. But uh, I don't really care about a woman's lay. I mean, if it's something like astronomically high, like one time I hooked up with this 21 year old whose lay count was 300 plus. I mean, I was like, damn, this chick has been getting down at 21. Like, she lost her virginity at 17. So, 304 years is pretty good. Uh, but I don't really give a shit how many guys a woman slept with. Uh, I don't think that tells. I think there's this big misconception some guys have is that a woman's lay count is indicative of her character. I don't think it tells you anything about her character at all. Um, so, I don't really care at all, personally. Okay, so let me take one or two more questions. Uh, and a lot of these are just like... Right, while we're looking at that, I just want to go back to the OnlyFans thing because I was thinking about it. Yeah. Imagine if like 10 years ago, someone had asked you the question, oh, Alex, um, what do you think about me dating a girl that puts uh, very graphic pictures of her ass up um, on... Um, on, on, on the internet, very graphic pictures of her ass and like kind of slow motion videos of her doing a workout and things like that or sucking a, a ice lolly. <laughs> hmm, you know, what, is she a porn star or something? It's like switch forward 10 years is what all girls are doing on Instagram. That's why I think the OnlyFans is just, unfortunately, the, the natural like, regression or progression, I don't know what you want to call it, of what's going to happen. Yeah, I think attention is very addictive. I, my, one of my biggest pet peeves, I've talked about this in the past, is if I'm on a date with a girl, if she's checking her phone. That's like a big, big turnoff for me in terms of uh, like emotional. So I understand that uh, you know attention is addictive. I'm addicted to it too. But I am self-aware of that. And if I'm having interaction with a person, like if I'm on a date, I'm not going to be constantly checking my phone. That's just like, because I want to no. have a mo moment with that person. If a girl is doing that, then I know that she lacks self-awareness. And that's like, that's like just, just like a big thing. Like the first time she does it, I'll call her out. The second time, I'll just take her phone away from her. But then if she's like constantly like needing that phone, that's just like that's I'm just nervous like when they do it. If they take out their phone. I punish them by taking out my phone. And when they're done, I carry on with my phone for the amount of time, double the amount of time that they're on until they get it. But um, just back to that OnlyFans question, I'm, I, you know, that's a you've just sort of you sort of raised the point, which is yes, if you don't want an attention seeker girl and you're thinking I can't I haven't got the headspace for this then yes stay away from them I, that should have been my answer but um in, in regards to that this is just something that's going to be like the majority of women will have an OnlyFans account you know unless they're married or whatever they're going to have one um so get 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 prepared guys for that 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 day it's so much money in OnlyFans. I was I was telling uh, John, he's a good buddy of mine. I don't know if you know JML John Anthony, that he should fucking start an OnlyFans because he has this like crazy setup right now. Uh, and honestly, maybe one day I will start an OnlyFans. Who the fuck knows? What is it? I mean, no, I understand how it works, but do do people make a lot of money out of it? 
there's so many uh, OnlyFans millionaires right now. There's you have you have chicks who, for example, work in accounting and made like six thousand a month, and then they realize that they can make sixty thousand a month and work ten percent as hard from OnlyFans. How do you not get someone filming it and then showing other people? That's that would be a big worry of mine. That would be a serious worry if someone if I've got my, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm like full frontal or something and then someone's filming it and you can see it's me or whatever and then they pass that on to someone I know. Well, I, well we're I've only got, fans. I've got a child also. I've got a child. I've got oh, a really? Okay. Yeah. And I've got to be careful. I've already got enough stuff out there on me that's going to, he's going to one day say, what's that? You already felt like, I used to be in, um, I used to be in Zoo Magazine, which is a big magazine that used to be in England and I was, I was the dating advice columnist and oh. I've, I was on it for three years and I would do a photo shoot for every single time, but I never took my boobs out. It was just like bikini shot and stuff. Mm. It was really beautiful pictures, beautiful, stunning pictures. And um, I put them all piled up in the attic and he found them. And he's like, mom, why is your bum out in this picture? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you're so stupid, mom. What are you doing? You look stupid in these pictures. He's like, you look beautiful, but you look really silly in them with your bum out. Um, so I've already got to be careful of what I've, I put out there. Right, right. I mean, yeah, it just just comes down to well, the thing with OnlyFans is that the only way to make it profitable is if you show your face and if it's available to the you know the mass public. So if you you're if, if you want to make it profitable, yeah, yeah, exactly. no one wants, no one's gonna pay money to just see like anonymous figure masturbating. Like you, you got you got to show the face. Yeah, exactly. Want. But then what I wanted to say about that accountant is that it could be sent to her mom. That's a that's, risk. That's the worry. It's, you know? it's a risk. It's a risk for sure. I mean, the chick who I did the OnlyFans with, she was uh, her parents knew about it, so she they knew that she did OnlyFans. They were okay with it. She actually was also a mom. She had a child. I guess she just wasn't worried about the kid finding out. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, she she was just like, you know what? I can make a lot of money doing this. This is easy. This is no, fun. No, no, no. I'm not judging. I'm not judging at all. I'm just like, it's okay if she doesn't care. People finding out is different. Okay. It, yeah, it's pros and cons. I mean, just like with like with what what I do, like I could never probably have a corporate job in my whole life as a result of the content I put out. And I, I'm okay with that. I made that decision. I don't want to go back to corporate America. They can suck my dick. So uh, yeah. So no, it's like me, my child's school. I have a different name there because if some of the mums Google me, I'm 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 an outcast. Really outcast well, i feel like you're not that controversial though like i don't feel no, like it's no, women women are going to their kids we go to a very good school live in a good part of london i'm telling you i'll be an outcast they don't do things like that mm. just, they'll be like my god she's got her you know she's got like a little tiny little bikini on or something of all those likes or she's doing a video about how to have sex with a girl in five minutes i'm you know i'm ostracized excommunicated the, the snobby brit all right, let's uh, take this question. You guys may have mentioned in this, do you know of any Dane coach at PUA so on the autism spectrum? So, yeah, we said RZ Tyler. I guess he's wondering in addition to RZ Tyler. I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of them are, to be honest. Oh, I know, right? I know. But um, I don't know if they're actually – I think I've got a whole thing about this autism. I think just a lot of people are just socially fucked, and then they just say, it's my autism, and that's a great way for them to not sure. do anything about it. Like a great get out of jail free card. Sorry, it's yeah. my autism. I'm just I just don't have any empathy. For you. Sorry. Um, we'll make a fucking effort then. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a. I think they think that they're on the spectrum and they're just socially um, weird. That's my it, it's so subjective too. Like what one psychiatrist may think you're on the spectrum, one may think you're not. It's so subjective. There's no like blood test that you can do which shows you that you're where you are in the spectrum. So it's like no, so. Subjective. I, I, sorry for interrupting, but I've got a whole, I've got to be careful what I say here, but when I was growing up at school and stuff, you always had a couple of weirdos in the school mm. that like, socially didn't want to talk to anyone. I was one of them. You have as many as now. And I was thinking, it's because what happened is if you were socially weird at school, you either got the shit kicked out of you, or, you know, someone had to sit down and say to you, look, mate, you've got to, you know, you've got to fix this problem. You know, and then they would make a, an effort to be, for lack of a better word, normal. Whereas now they go, I'm sorry, I've got autism. And I had a student and it, it broke my heart because he was he had, he had was socially weird and stuff, but we were making real progress. He's like, I'm going for an autism test. I'm going for the, the test. 
And he was so happy. He goes, I am autistic. I knew it. I knew it. I'm on the spectrum. And now I don't have to do this. And now I've, and he was, it was like, this is a perfect, it, it's just given you all these excuses. We've made yeah. all this work. So I think, yes, of course it's autism. I've got, I've got two people in my family with, you can see clearly they have autism. But then you've got a lot of people who are just socially fucked and then they kind of pass some sort of test that makes them sort of almost give them a license to carry on being like that. And I just think maybe 30 years ago, that wouldn't have been an opportunity and they would have done the hard work. Yeah, I mean, I, def I definitely agree with that. I mean, I think that in the black pill men go in their own way community, like they say that you either have game or you don't. You're either born with game and you're not. And that's so fucking horseshit because I wasn't born with game. I didn't lose my virginity yeah. until I was 19. Didn't start sleeping with women consistently until I was in my mid 20s. So I definitely didn't have game. I struck out so many fucking times. If you saw me 10 years ago, you would have been like, who the fuck but is this guy? With me, but same with me. Like, I'm not saying I've got game, but my flirting skills used to be fucking atrocious. And now I'm very good at it. I'm good, very good at seduction. I've understood men better. I know how to flirt on lots of different <laughs> levels. I'm very good at it now. But you should have, at bloody, you know, 21 years old, I was just relying on how I looked. Now I got older, I had to realize, no, hold on. I've got to, I've got to work on my charm. I've got to work on, on my, you know, seduction skills now. Is that bullshit? Whoever said that to you? Wouldn't you say, though, that for women, it's a lot more forgivable not to have social skills if they're attractive? Social skills. Yeah, of course. Women, beautiful women get away with a lot. There is a cutoff point with beautiful women. There's a point where the men will say, OK, that's it. I'm done. You know, you've just crossed too many, too many lines. But um, I've always said to guys, look, it, it's different. Like, if you're a good looking guy, you will buy a certain amount of time, and make some mistakes. Um, but she will buy a lot more time than you. So men need to stop looking at attraction the way women see attraction. It, 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 it is different. It's like um, when I teach guys like how to, um, you know, if, if you're in the friend zone or something, not in friend zone, but if you want to kind of like start heating things up, uh, a lot of time they sort of say, oh, yes, I'll just put on the right music and I'll, I'll put the right lighting and things like that. And they're thinking like how they want to be attracted so uh, how they want to be seduced because a woman in order to to turn a man on she can switch it on like that by literally just you know suggesting something and putting on the turning down the lights and suddenly the man's like oh this is on and he's ready to go women right. are not like that and i think a lot of men get confused and kind of think oh that's what i would like so that's what i should do for the woman to seduce the woman yeah, men, men are a light switch. Women are like a knob that you have to jump yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't come up with that, but I like no, that. No, that is pretty good analogy. Let's take one last question. So uh, I want to end off on this. Besides money, what makes a good-looking 15-year-old man more attractive to 30-something-year-old woman than a handsome man her own age, five years? So basically the question is, what can a 50-year-old guy do to be more attractive besides making more money? Okay, so I've, I've got loads of videos on this, and um, – um, to streamline it, uh, the older guy has his special powers and the younger guy has his special powers, okay? And they have to acknowledge that if they start trying to get the superpowers of the one or the other, that's when it all starts going wrong. The older guy, um, he is gonna, he has to show that he's, he's, not as, he's not as easily impressed. He's been with beautiful women before. He's seen it, he's done it, he's ticked the boxes, what more have you got? Yeah, you're a good looking girl. What more have you got? You know, I've been with good looking girls in the past. It's got to go with that. I'm not saying you should say that, but that kind of vibe, that attitude. Mm -hmm. you can also, sometimes uh, say, you know, you can make the, the jokes that older guys can throw in. You know, I think that's very important. So I always say to older guys, depends how old they are, but 50 is not that old. I'll say, look, you know, sometimes say to the girl, you're, you're too old for me. I like really young. I like 21 year olds. You're like 25 or, or 30 or something. Make it as a joke. You know, don't make it so easy for her. Um, like, oh, you're, a lot of older guys go, you, you, you must think I'm, you know, you're so young and beautiful and you must think I'm some old creep. But they really make these fucking mistakes saying stuff like that. I think older guys are very worried about coming across as creepy also. What they've got to focus on is uh, the superpowers of the older guy and not try and, uh, you know, compensate and try and become like the younger guy, trying to prove that, you know, he's right, really right. 
part and stuff, don't do that. And young guys do the same mistake. They try and look stable and very professional. And I've got my life sorted out like the older guy. And I'm like, as a woman who likes younger men, that is certainly not what I'm looking for in a younger guy. So about my 401k, let me uh, tell you about my investments that I made in my future. Yeah. I hate it when younger guys do that. It's like, just make me laugh and, and, and be silly. I don't want to hear about, oh, I've got my, I've got my life together, Kez. Yeah, I promise you, I've got my life together. It's like, I go out an older guy if I want some of their life together. I'll break this down the way my dad explains it to me in his Russian accent. I don't know about some stuff you teach, Alex. You know, for me, game very simple. You know, I go to a Mexican resort and, you know, most guys my age, they don't go to gym. I go to gym. I look good. I take shirt off. I sit. I drink tequila. I drink tequila, a lot of tequila. And sometimes girl come up to me and she say, oh, you work out. And then, you know, I take her back to my hotel room. I'm like, oh, geez, dad, thank you for that uh, wisdom. Why is he not drinking vodka? That's shameful. He's that, Russian, he's that, drinking that, tequila. Geez, that, that's, that's a big misconception, that Russians, we love vodka. We don't. I'm sorry, I've been to Russia, and they have, every time they, they order vodka, I'm sorry, I saw it. The Russians in <laughs> Russia love vodka. The Russians who, because that's the primary drink there. The Russians who get out of Russia and they taste tequila and whiskey, they realize that shit is way better. That's interesting. I didn't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. For educating me. No problem. All right, guys. So we've we've gone for an hour and a half. This wow. was a go fucking live stream. I think we got so much value here. Uh, thank you so much, Kezia, for coming on. Really appreciate it. If guys want to follow you, if they want to get in touch, do your coaching, how can they go about so? Okay, it's Kezia-noble.com. Um, Instagram, Kezia Noble 18. Um, but yeah, it's the website, kezia-noble.com and my YouTube channel. If you just put Kezia Noble, you'll find my videos. Lots of stuff about older guys, what they can do to get younger women. And there's a lot of stuff for younger guys who want older women. There, there is a niche out there. There is, there is a demand for that. Thank God. And uh, stuff about getting out of the friend zone, approach anxiety, sexual escalation. You can find it all there. And I'm also little shameless plug. Um, I'm running now something called the Masterclass, which you can find out more about on the website. Good stuff. So if you guys are watching this on repeat, we're going to put all the links in the description. So uh, check the description. We're going to have it in there. All right, Kezia, just stay on for a minute because I do want to get an answer on this late count question off camera. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, joining it in. Uh, we're going to have some more awesome videos coming out this week. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. Thank you guys. Until next time.